Within the next 12 to 24 months, Europe is about to be inundated. In fact, it's already happening now with superior budget, low cost electric cars, which in many ways solve the problems that Volkswagen has made evident in these EVs that it's selling right now. I've mentioned this phenomenon on the channel before. People still don't understand what's happening though. This is revolutionary, but for some reason, everyone seems to be just ignoring it, like pretending it doesn't exist or pretending it doesn't matter, when in fact, it actually does. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. It's a very, very interesting day. Ford and General Motors stock have received massive downgrades. I mean, huge downgrades from more than 10 different analysts. For example, GM stock downgraded from $58 price target down to 36 Ford even worse from some analysts that are predicting enormous strife on the horizon for these two companies. Am I that pessimistic as these analysts? No, I'm not actually, but it's definitely worth considering the risks. And this is amidst really pretty significant global challenges right now. Those global challenges are not just going to hit Ford and GM. These analysts, I mean, they're only talking about Ford and GM because they're US based, but the truth is Honda's sales have collapsed in the US and in other countries. Nissan's same story. Nissan are going through an even worse situation than Ford General Motors. No one's pointing this out. Because well, what the Japanese, to be fair, the Japanese media, they just heap praise on their own car makers. They don't do what the US media does, which is kind of tear down their automakers. That's what the US media does do, to be fair. They tear down Tesla, they tear down Ford, General Motors. Japanese media, they're much kinder to their own companies. That means a lot of people are living in fantasy land. Fantasy land means you don't really understand what's going on. What's going on? Well, it, it is pretty significant, right? Stocks are going down. Stock prices are going down for good reason. Many companies, the truth is finally coming out. I've been mentioning this truth now, I think for 12 months, I've been saying, I don't believe this whole story that producers just can't get enough chips. Then their sales are crashing because they can't get enough chips. I've been calling this out now for many, many months and I'm still gonna keep doing it. And I still think it's a made up story. I still think they're making this up. I still think their production is constrained by one thing more than anything else, and that is demand. I know they keep saying this stuff, we've got all these orders, right, right. yeah, they do, but I think primarily the majority of these orders are for EVs that they can't produce. I mean, Ford stopped people from ordering the Ford F-150 electric pickup truck when it got to 200,000 pre-orders because they couldn't make them for years. There, that's where the real demand is. And that is why Tesla, BYD, Nita, Hoson, et cetera, et cetera, go on. The list goes on and on and on of those electric car manufacturers. Why their vehicle sales increase month over month? Don't decrease. That is the fundamental difference between EV manufacturers in China, for example, and manufacturers of gas-powered vehicles who keep on whining about part shortages when the truth is what we're really looking at here is a customer demand shortage for gasoline powered cars. They want EVs and they want smart EVs. They don't want old school EVs. They don't want a Toyota EV with Toyota infotainment that was from 1997. That's the truth. And here is a perfect example of how the industry, particularly the Chinese auto market, that is a little microcosm here. Not little, it's the biggest car market in the world, but it's a microcosm. It shows us what consumers will want in the future. It's like Norway. It's like Norway, consumers have a choice. When consumers have a choice, they will choose the best product, or at least the product they can get that's the best for the price that they can afford. So what's happening in China is this. Chinese automakers are not doing what these Japanese automakers are just giving subpar, subpar computing chips, subpar computing power, subpar software in their vehicles. Volkswagen as well. What the heck? The software from these, these legacy auto companies is just subpar. And Chinese automakers are lifting the game. So is Tesla. Here is the perfect example, right? Nita has launched the Nita U11. This has the Qualcomm 8155 chip. Now, many people are just not aware of what these chips are. They're part of the Snapdragon family. The Snapdragon is a family of mobile system on a chip or SOC made by Qualcomm for use in smartphones, tablets, laptops, 
two-in-one PC, smart watches, and smart books devices. It's basically the next generation of infotainment software for car vehicles, right? Most legacy automakers in, in the world are not using this technology. This is the future of EVs that are not Teslas. So this is the next generation of computing chips, and it has 13, 13 times more power than the previous generation, which was already not being used by legacy automakers and was already better than what they were using. It's 13 times better, at least 13 times better processing speed, also uses less power for its processing speed, just next generation in pretty much every way, right? But the thing is, right, this is the kind of thing that you would expect to see maybe in a Porsche vehicle, right? Or some sort of high-end car. But Chinese automakers now are putting them in affordable, basically budget-priced electric cars. So right now, flagship electric vehicle models use the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8155 top of the range chip, and they use it as a selling point in their EVs. However, Nita, one of the world's biggest budget electric car manufacturers, an EV company owned by Hoson Auto, has made the move to put these chips in its budget EVs. CNEV Post says that Nita today made the Nita U11 electric SUV officially available in China as a successor to the previously offered Nita U. So basically this Nita U has been out for 12 months and they were like, no, 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 it's not good enough. Let's raise the game. Let's raise the bar. I mean, Nissan, right? Nissan Leaf, they did basically nothing to it for eight years. World Electric Car of the Year. The Jaguar I-Pace, same thing. Nothing's been changed in that car for five years. These Chinese automakers are like, well, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Uh, you know why they're doing this? Because massive competition, massive. They have to one-up their neighbors. There's like 80 electric car manufacturers in China and they're all trying to one-up each other. This is what happens as a result. Nita has four models and their prices. Base model EV, 18,000 US dollars. This is not a micro vehicle, by the way. This vehicle is about the size of an, a BYD 803, sort of the size of like, say, a smaller version of a Tesla Model Y. Now the U11, the luxury version of that car costs around about $20,000. Then they also have a couple of other variants which cost a couple of thousand more. You get a few extra specifications, bigger batteries, etc. And with its exception of the lowest priced U11 400 Lite, the smart cockpit for this new vehicle in all versions is powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8155 chip. Given that the Snapdragon 8155 chip enables a much better interior experience, this, I mean, these kind of chips now are basically in charge of operating almost all functions of a car, especially with touchscreens in cockpits now that operate most functions in the vehicle. This is a huge improvement. And this is the kind of thing we previously only saw in high-end vehicles, but it's making its way down now to affordable EVs. And it's the kind of thing that customers actually want. In fact, they're demanding this sort of specification in China now. For example, here, on the 1st of May, Voya, a subsidiary of Dongfeng Motor, it's an EV company in China, began allowing Voya-free owners who had already purchased the car to upgrade their vehicles, their older vehicles, to this new chip at a price of 13,000 RMB, which is like 2,000 US dollars, you could basically upgrade your car, get a way better experience. And the reason for this is because customers were basically demanding it. They're saying, we want this, and if you don't give it to us, we're just gonna, uh, we're gonna say horrible things about you, or we're gonna go buy cars from other companies. That's what they do in China. They're very, very unforgiving, because they can be, because they have other choices. CNFPost.com says that on the 15th of June, NIO announced its new SUV, the ES7, would have a new system in its interior to have a whole new operating system using Qualcomm's 8155 Snapdragon chip and allowing existing ES8, ES6, and EC6 owners to pay for an upgrade of the price of 9,600 RMB, which is one and a half thousand US dollars. NIO did the same thing. Its customers were saying, we want this new chip. NIO's like, yeah, but we've already sold you the car. I mean, this is unreasonable. Customers like, no, we want it. And so Neo worked out how to get this new chip into these customers' cars. Now, do you see this from any other manufacturers in the world? Are they doing that? No, they're not. None of them are doing this. But Chinese automakers are being forced to do it by consumers. What does that mean? It means they're upping the game. They're improving the consumer experience, they're giving them options. They're not saying, you know, what Legacy Auto says, Volkswagen says, all these other automakers say, if you want the newer car, the best car, you've got to buy the new 2023 model. You can't have the 2023 model if you bought the 2022 model. Bad luck. Buy the new car. But the world's changing. 
right? Chinese automakers are being forced to change and give consumers the new car, even if they bought the 12 month old version. This is pretty much what's happening. Geely's premium EV subsidiary Zika announced a free program for Zika 001 owners to upgrade their cockpit to the Qualcomm 8155 chip on July the 11th. So Geely went one step further and they said, you know what, you've already bought this EV, you might have had it for a while now. That's all right. We're going to give you this new chip for free. Bring your car in, we'll give you the brand new chip, we'll fit it, make all the, we'll integrate the whole system, make it work really well. It's going to cost you zero dollars. I mean, this is taking customer service to an entirely new level. The thing is, right, the Zika 001, the car they're doing that on, that car is one of the best EVs you can buy in the world. It's really good. But the thing is, uh, Geely were like, nah, nah, it's good. But you know what? It's not good enough. Not only are we going to bring in this new chip, give it to customers for free, we've already bought the car. We're going to start using structural battery packs. We're going to massively up the efficiency. We're going to make these battery packs, right? The actual energy density of these packs now is going to increase by 20 to 30%, meaning the new model of this car coming out at the end of this year is going to have a thousand kilometers of range, and it's a big car. I mean, this is really changing the goalposts. The goalposts just keep on getting further and further away. If you are the competition, you're making EVs now, you're someone like Honda saying, you know what, in 2026, we're going to have XXX EV. It's going to have 600 kilometers of range, 500 kilometers of range. By the time you get to 2026, what's the competition going to be doing? Nah, we, we hit that years ago. I mean, a consumer is going to say, oh, we're happy with 2022 spec cars in 2026. No, I don't think so. Now, even Ford is being forced to do the same thing in China, though, not in the US. US consumers are not yet forcing this on Ford. In China, Ford actually said it will install the Snapdragon 8155 chip for free in Mustang Mac E vehicles, even for vehicles that had already been sold because it didn't have a choice. It's competing in China. Customers there are not prepared to accept less than that. But the thing is here, right? The price of the Mustang Mach-E base model price is 300,000 RMB. So that's more than 42,000 US dollars. The price of the Nita U11 with this level of Qualcomm 8155 chip is, well, it's less than 20,000 US dollars. Now, what about Nita? Well, Nita also allows consumers of three high price models to buy their assisted driving package which starts at 8,800 RMB, which is about two and a half thousand US dollars. The assisted driving system is built on the Journey 3 chip from local chip maker Horizon Robotics. Nita said it offers 1.2.5 driving assistance with 22 sensors on the car. What does all that mean? It basically means that you can buy a pretty affordable EV from Nita. In fact, they make some of the most budget priced EVs in the world with this new level technology, which will give you pretty impressive self-driving. It's not full self-driving, nothing like it, but a little bit like Tesla's autopilot, for example. Now, if you're wondering how big this need a vehicle for 18,000 US dollars is, it's a compact SUV. It's 4.55 meters long. So, I mean, it's actually bigger than the BYD 803. It's 1,860 millimeters wide and 1,628 millimeters high. Wheelbase, nearly 2.8 meters. So, yeah, it's actually only about 20 centimeters shorter than a Tesla Model Y. Driving range for this vehicle, base model variant, 400 kilometers. The mid-range variant, which only costs, you know, 22,000 US dollars, 500 kilometers. The top spec variant is about 26,000 US dollars, 610 kilometers of range. They're all CLTC, of course. So, I mean, you got to remove 100 kilometers from that to get more of a close to a real world figure. But still, the prices of these cars who knows how they're doing this. I don't see how they could possibly make a profit from these cars. I don't think they are, but it's not really the point, right? They're selling them at these prices. This is the competition. These cars, these vehicles are going to Europe very soon. German auto market, wow. German automakers, BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Skoda, Seat, you know, the list goes on. They're concerned. You can see why when this will be their competition within the next 12 to 24 months. And frankly, I understand where they're coming from. They should be concerned. The future of the automotive industry is about to change drastically. And this is the world's biggest industry by far. Right now, customers buying Volkswagen EVs are having to settle for 
very average subpar infotainment. And the computing power of Volkswagen EVs is, well, abysmal in comparison to these cut price budget EVs from China, which are about to go on sale all over Europe. Now remember, Volkswagen makes 50% of its profits in China. How long will that last for when customers have a choice? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.